Hi guys, Squirrel here. We're back. Three Countries, Episode 3, Night Train Through the Valleys. Hello there, open the doors to let passengers aboard. It's a quiet, warm summer's night, and there isn't much traffic. Enjoy the ride and try to stick to the timetable. Okay, so this time we've got a bit of a timetable going on, so let's, uh, let's open the door straight away, I think. There we go. Right, what is our... Pick up passengers, right, with no particular pickup time... But pick up passengers from Felderick track 4A, arrive 23.22, depart 23.23. Okay, so I've got to stick to a timetable this time, and that's going to be interesting. Let's get this thing into forward ready. Wow, it really is night time. Look at this. This is going to be interesting. I've never seen the scenery quite like this before. Uh, let's release. And... Hopefully, off we go. There we go. Never sure what acceleration to use off the off the start. Bye bye, people. I shall see you all later. Oh, nice, nice scenery. Let's have a zoom out and have a look at this. Look at this. this looks fantastic. It's all lit up. Look at this. So cool. It's beautiful. That isn't that the. This is where the chocolate factory is, isn't it? I think. Let's get back in here. Whilst I want to stick to the timetable, I don't want to break loads of speed limits doing that. Where's the next station? Tw 20 kilometres away? Blimey. Alright, let's get up to full speed straight away then. We have a track speed limit of 140. Let's do it. No messing around. This is, in effect, I think, the, the the reverse of episode one. I think we're coming back the other way now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just about to hit that speed limit. Uh, okay. Speed limit's not... That's better. Let's bring that speed down a touch. There we go. Okay, slight mistake there. Oh, look at this. What a cracking view that is. Freight train going the other way. Yeah, the lighting is kind of cool. Definitely don't do many scenarios with the lighting like this. As I was saying, the um, I th if you remember in episode one, I think we went that way. This uh, Bledens to Lindau, this one. So the other one coming the other way, I think we reversed that. Seems to remember. We ended up in the chocolate box city. I'm going to try and stay in cab for a, a bit. Just to make sure there's no signals that I need to be aware of. And we are about to go down a slope. So I'm going to back off on the throttle. I'm pretty certain the momentum of this thing is going to carry us through. What's it like inside? It's him again. And her again. A bit of variety wouldn't go amiss. It's lovely, isn't it? I love this. Do you know what? This game actually looks better when the lighting's like this. It really does. Look at that. Doesn't it look great? Awesome. Anyway, that's enough of that. We're about to break the speed limit again if I'm not careful. We are going down a slope. I'm going to have to leave the brakes on for a second. Graduated self-tap. Arrive 23.22. Our ETA is 23.21. So that's good. We're actually a minute ahead of schedule. The difficulty level leads me to think that there won't be many stoppages on the way in terms of uh, signalling. I think it was two green pips if I remember on the difficulty level. Let's try and stay close to that 140. I kind of like being a minute ahead and I want to stay there. I'm not really cutting it too fine. 
What, I, what makes me wonder, I mean, I'm using that thing at the bottom though, which I can clearly see when I'm going down a slope. What does a real train driver use? Does he just use his experience? Does he just have to learn the, the route that he's driving and know when it's going downhill or uphill? Or is there actually inside the cabin somewhere, is there some kind of attitude indicator? So that he can, he's made aware that the train is going uphill or downhill because a slight incline is very, very hard for the eye to pick up on. And I do wonder how they manage that so that they can kind of plan ahead a little bit. Or is it just a case of, you know, you drive the route and then you learn through experience? It's really nice and quiet, isn't it? You know, if you were in one of these houses here... That's not going to wake you up, is it? In fact, the noisiest thing is not really the engine, it's the carriages on the track, I think. It's amazing that the momentum of this train... Look at that, I'm throttled down 100 to 0%. The momentum of this train can almost keep it rolling at 140 kilometers. Unbelievable. Just need a slight bit of throttle to keep it there. ETA 23, 21 and a half. Hmm. That's slipping. It is actually starting to add up, isn't it? Like 23, 21 and 34. Blimey. Do I literally have to stay at 140 just to get there on time? Crikey, I'm just, like, the seconds are ticking up. Look at it. Wow, I'm going to be late. I can't believe that. I'm flat out doing one kilometre off the speed limit. And apparently, I need to go faster. I don't understand how I can go faster. Look at that. It's, my ETA is getting closer and closer. 7.6k. I don't think I'm going to make it in by 23-22, even if I stick to 140. Well, that answers my question in episode 2. Clearly, the, the tolerance is set so that you have to be doing the speed limit. Otherwise, you're going to be late. Now, hang on. I'm doing 140-141, and I'm still... The, the counter's still ticking up. That doesn't make any sense. I'm guaranteed to be late now. Wow. Okay, I don't know how to solve that one. I don't want to break the speed limit. Yeah, just imagine when this thing is re... Is, the whole lot is retextured and re-rendered in the Unreal 4 engine. Imagine that. I really hope that they don't make you rebuy all the DLC as like some kind of HD pack. I fear for them doing that, you know. Like, they bring out the next train simulator and go, Right, all of your expansions, all of you that you've bought are now invalidated. You can't use them on the new train simulator. You have to go and rebuy them all in HD. That would be... Because some people, if you bought all of the, all the expansions for this game, you'd be on thousands of dollars. And imagine people would be very, very angry if they had to rebuy everything. So what they should do is just update the scenario packs. I mean, obviously this one's an external... That's the thing, this is a third-party one. This is Just Trains, so... I guess Just Trains are going to have to redo their textures and stuff to make it work with the new engine. I don't know. We don't know yet. We don't know the details, but... I am speeding. Because I'm going downhill. In fact, I should probably slow down quite a lot because I'm not paying attention... Oh dear. Actually, the the train should just about break. There we go. It's got good brakes on it. We got under 110. I feared for speeding then. Right, we've already passed our ETA time. We have to leave it 23.23. The problem is this is like a knock-on effect now. By the time I get to Lindau Track 2 at the end, I will be five minutes late probably. doesn't actually let you leave early, that's the thing. It only ever lets you leave on time. That was the warning. 
Press Q to clear that. It's equivalent to the AWS in the UK, the early warning system. It's letting me know there's a speed change. I just brought it down to 90. Looking good. I wish there was more light in this tunnel because this is very, very dark. Now, I've got to stop at the 200 meter mark. Which is interesting because I hope the platform's well lit so I can actually see the sign. I'm doing my best to try and estimate. I'm going to get outside the train so I can hopefully see the 200 sign above me. How the hell the driver sees it, I don't know. Well, you haven't said that. It's not that bad, is it? The problem is the experience teaches you as a train driver where it is. Was that 110? It's so hard to read. Uh-oh, 200. Blimey, blimey, stop, 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 stop. I don't want to go 100%, but... Felder Feldkirk. Feldkirk. There we go. Just past the 200. I think we should have been there. Oh, seriously, game. Are you seriously not getting out? Because... I'm, like, just past the 200 mark. Unbelievable. Well, that's blown the schedule. <laughs> The, the, the train, they just refuse to get out. What was... Th I thought I'd... Um, I thought I'd only missed it by a few metres. I've actually missed it by quite a bit. This is the 200 here, I think. Please be 200. Uh-oh. <laughs> 150 let's see if they'll get out they probably won't oh they did I got a minute with it this doesn't make any sense if that's 150 I thought I saw we passed that where was 200 I definitely saw 200 at some point <laughs> okay I'm gonna have to look on the way out. One, I definitely remember going past 150, which is in black. I definitely remember seeing 200. I thought I braked quite quickly, but when I was reversing, I didn't see the 200 that time. Let's get going. Let's see if we can spot it. Well, there it is. There's 200. How did I go past that? I don't know. I need to not be a fail burr. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I just need to not fail so hard. Right, let's get this thing maxed out. Let's go for it. 25 kilometers to the next one. What time do we need to be there? 23.36. Our current ETA is 23.34. We've got two minutes of leeway, which I'm sure I'll manage to burn up on the way. Look at that, beautifully. Accelerated to 110, backed off the throttle. Didn't break the speed limit. Impressive. And there goes another orange lit village. What would be, um, the only other, the only thing that would be kind of super cool is if it was Christmas time. And everybody had little Christmas lights on and stuff, and it was all coloured and lit up. It just looked amazing. But I do like the dusk lighting. It does look good. They've got that captured quite well. Let's get up to 140. We're on a schedule. And apart from overshooting my platform stopping point, I intend to stick to my schedule. Cool. I've kind of got the hang of the acceleration now. 
Braking takes a bit more time to learn, trying to estimate the correct stopping point. But that, those little numbers, could they really not have just made them bigger? Why are these tiny little things? Oh, is that a castle ahead? Or is that a factory? Do you know what? I think it's actually a castle. It is as well, look at that. Now that is... That's pretty. That's really nice, I like that. That looks so good at night. I bet that looks better at night than it does in the day. Oh dear. Too busy uh, accelerating into the speed limit. I hope they, when they do release the next version of this game... Well, I mean, the next version is out, what, in a month's time or something? But, I mean, well, they could release it for this one. I hope they change the career system, the way that it scores. It's always annoyed me that if you break the speed limit, the, the points rack up almost by the second. The penalty points just rack up. And I just find that a little bit too harsh. So I spotted I was going downhill just in time and whacked on the brakes. Through another platform. I'd like to actually take this train, you know, in real life. I think it'd be kind of nice. I know train drivers don't toot each other, but they're doing my simulation. We're friendly, okay? We're friendly to each other. That was Jim, by the way, just going past the other way. How far to the next stop? Wow, it's actually over there. Look at that, 16 kilometers. This is a cracking view. Imagine sticking your head out the window like this in the train. Ah! You know, like you're in when you were in your dad's car and you used to stick your head out the window. <laughs> but like dogs do. You know, dogs love doing that, don't they? And if you take a dog in a car, you open the window, they just love sticking their face through the uh, the gap in the window and getting the, the wind in the face. Even though they tend to go <laughs> and sort of turn away, they still stick their head back out the window because they like it. There's something about it. And it's always the same when you're a kid, you stick your head out the window. Because it's just cool. I bet train drivers are so tempted to do the same thing. Oh, look at that scenery. That's weird. Look at the rendering on that. That is kind of strange. Don't know what's going on there. I'm about to, I think, move up to a 160 speed limit. And then back down to 150, then back up to 160. I wonder which way north and west is here. Are we heading west at the moment? It'd be nice to know where the sun normally sets. In fact, it'd be fantastic if the sun was actually setting. You know, like the sun was setting over there, it would just look wonderful. Or anywhere, in fact. If the sky was a sunset, it would just look fantastic. Well, hopefully, Dovetail Games will take some of the technology that they're using for the flight simulator. I wonder if they're making the flight simulator on Unreal 4. In the same way they're going to be making Train Simulator on Unreal 4. That would be interesting. They could have crossover technology then. They could make their train sim look as good as their flight sim. Now that, on Unreal 4. My god, have you seen what Unreal 4 can do? Wow. That would look mightily impressive. I assume the engine can cope with the draw distances that's required for a flight simulator. Estimate time 23.35. We're good for time.
I like the contrast and the lighting. The platforms are like a white light. All the homes are in a, uh, like an orangey light. Due to the incandescent bulbs they use. Uh oh. So every time I stick my head out the window, I start speeding. You just can't view the scenery in this game and drive the train properly. It's <laughs> like one or the other. So it's some office blocks. What town is this then? Can't actually read the sign, it goes past so quickly. <laughs> Pause the video, tell me what it said. Okay, 7.8. Let's try and get up to track speed a bit more. 23.35. We're still ahead of time on this one. It's weird, on the last section it was so hard to, to get the time, but on this one I'm not having any problems. Probably because I'm just breaking the speed limit all the time. Hey ho. Zoom out a bit and have a look around. It's so picturesque, isn't it? Slight incline coming up to the platform by the look of it. We're going back to Lindau. I think Lindau is where the lake is, you know. The last time I drove a train with um, lighting like this was when I did the Isle of Wight run. Which is basically a London Underground train on, an, on a surface track. And it runs around the Isle of Wight. And the Isle of Wight is a little tiny island. Uh, just off the south coast of England. It's kind of popular for um, as a little. It's a, it's not a very big island, but it's popular as a holiday destination or um, Duke of Edinburgh Awards, which is like a uh, an award system for the young that go out and do exploration and trekking and navigation orienteering on their own, and also for school parties and stuff. It seems to you know take school. I went there twice, maybe three times with the school on a school holiday. It's quite popular for that. But anyway, they've got the electrified... They haven't got a proper train system as such. They've got an electrified um, tube train, basically, on the surface. And uh, it runs right to the platform edge. And if you watch my Isle of Wight video, you can see that. And it was a similar lighting to this, I think. I think it was a bit darker. But it wasn't far off. Here we go. We're approaching our destination. And it looks like... We're just about on time. I figure we can freewheel our way in. We're just under 120. We might need a better break to get down to 110. Let's get the brakes on. There we go. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. This is the built-up area, isn't it, eh? Okay, let's start... ...to break in now. Now, let's try and get that 200 sign. I don't think I'll do it. I think it's going to take a bit of practice to get it. See if I can spot it. It's the 150. I need to start braking heavily at 150, I think. Especially in this lighting. What's that? Is that 300 or is that the wrong way? 200 written backwards? What's going on? Okay. 
I've not seen a number facing my way that says 200 on it. I'm slightly worried now. What's this? That doesn't say 200 either. Maybe I just go to the end of the platform then. Yep, there it is. Right at the end of the platform. <laughs> How could you know this? Without experience there. 200 is above me and also there, I think. And this is 300. Hopefully they'll live with that. I've overshot it. It's back there, look. No, there it is. They're going to refuse. You watch. Oh, no, they didn't. They got off. Thank you very much, citizens. Actually, it's okay if you look at it, because my platform, they can still get off straight under the roof. The reason they don't like getting off otherwise is because they get wet. Even when it's not raining, they, they're just sort of being awkward, basically. Depart, 23.37. Okay, we're on time. Dawnburn. That is Dawnburn. Quite a big place by the look of it. Very, very built up. Just got this feeling the lake's over there, you know. What's that? Is that a... Um... I can hear a noise over there. Can you hear that? It should be in your right ear now. There's some noise coming from over there. Come on, people. Finish doing what you're doing. Okay, let's do this. One hundred percent acceleration, rightly or wrongly. That's what I'm doing. Now then, next stop. Let's get back in the plot in the thing. Next stop, 11k, so Bregenz is over there. That's not too far this time. One twenty. It's interesting how they've raised the train up on, a, on an embankment like this, isn't it? All the houses are on the flat there, and then they've put an embankment up to raise the train up. Which... Why? What is the thinking behind that? I would have thought that raising it up means that it makes the noise go further by elevating it. I would have thought it would be better to put it in a valley, if anything. So I'm curious as to why it's like that. Nighttime training. It does look good, doesn't it? The, the lighting on that track is just lovely. Right, let's get up to 140. Not difficult when you're going down a slope. ETA 2343, need to get there. Oh, blimey. I'm behind. Is it because I wasted a few valuable seconds on the platform? It could be, you know. I didn't leave exactly on time. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Massive! Yeah, we're going to be late, I think. 23.43. Actually, it's over there. Which means we've got a very sharp right-hand bend coming up. Oh, this looks... Um, this looks very built up. Let's try and hold it at this speed if we can. Look at this. Now that... 
that's a platform <laughs> very industrial Look at all that is it's like a massive train distribution centre, isn't it? Look, they've even got containers there. Cranes for loading containers on the back of trains. Good stuff. Get back in the cab. 5.4. Not many speed limit changes. I can see one coming up now, but for the most part, it's just been straight 140 down here. I wonder what time the last train runs down this track. Or maybe it's 24 hour. Maybe they just do what they often do, run passenger services to like 1am and then you get your freight going down it until the rush hour starts again. Let's get some braking going. There we go. We are now track speed legal. Again, we've got the joys of trying to find stopping marker 200. Arrived 23.44, we're 18 seconds late currently. Judging by our ETA. I think you can claw back quite a bit of time. If you can um, judge your braking correctly. You know, so you get get towards the platform and then if you can judge your braking so that you can control decelerate down to your stopping point, you can probably save a lot of time doing that. Unlike me, if you stop early and then have to move forward again, you just waste a whole load of time doing that. Okay, let's start slowing down now. We've got to get down to 60 pretty quickly. That was the uh, early warning indicator I just cleared. Okay, right, here's the platform. And I think I'm going to massively overshoot this. <laughs> On a 140... One forty, can I see it? Two hundred. I think that's where they want to be. It's a 200 marker there. I just hope that's right, I really do. Yes! I'd use 100% braking then, but it's not career mode. And there's the lake, I knew it! I knew we were going to be by the lake. That looks so good. Oh, those, that boat over there needs to be lit up. They need to have lighting here, like flood lighting, spot lamps and stuff. It just looked great. You see passenger boats going along. Yeah, we've definitely been here before. I can still hear that background noise. <laughs> I think it's just a general noise of the engine, I assume. Okay, we're almost ready. Next stop is the last stop. Let's 
let's go. Arrive 23.54. A 10 minute stop, basically. Track speed 60 at the moment. It's a very, very built up area this, isn't it? I'm not speeding. Oh, you scumbag game. It said 60 and then it suddenly flicked to 50. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I should have been looking at the road signs, the track signs and the road signs. Because it doesn't actually say 50 on the on the display down there. It was one of those situations where the the in-game speedometer disagreed with what it said on the track and it didn't show 50 properly. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to get outside and look at this. Wonderful view. Oh, that is lit up, that boat there, you see it? got a green light on it. Oh, this looks good. These people who live in these houses here have got off. they got the most bizarre situation. Outside of their house is a train line and then a pier. So their view over the lake goes off a track. So they can't just come out of their house and walk over to the lake. They have to walk along to the next crossing point. That must be seriously annoying. I wonder which came first, the, the train line or the houses? Because if I'd have bought a house there, and then somebody came along and said, hey, you know what, we're going to build a train line between your house and that lake, <laughs> I think I'd be ready to punch people. Because that would seriously be annoying. No mind the inconvenience and the vibration and the noise. Okay, how far... I can't see where... Oh, there it is, 8.3. Oh, we're going all the way around here, right, right round the lake. That's fine. Yeah, this is a complete reverse of the of the very first journey we did. Wow, there's a lot of boats in there, considering the time of day. <laughs> hmm, popular at midnight, this place. Midnight boaters. I think we'll try and stay external for a bit of this, because it is... Very nice. It's a very lovely aqua colour as well. The Austrian-German border, you see it? Lockau track. So we're crossing from Austria back into Germany. I wonder if there's actually a marker outside that shows it. I can see it on the mini-map thing at the bottom. Just wondering if there's a, a big bright yellow line on the floor. <laughs> this, this is the border. I'm looking, I can't see anything. Oh, maybe it's the river. Maybe that's the... Maybe that's the marker. Must be weird living right next to a border like that. Well, we crossed it. I'm not really sure where the border was, but we should see a, a change in the signage now. They do the signs differently in Australia than they do in Germany. In Australia. In Austria than they do in Germany. K's away. Oh, I keep speeding. It keeps easing up on me that speed. Just tipping me over a hundred every time. Be quiet. I think this would be a nice place to live right next to a big lake like this. I think it'd be very, uh, very splendid.
ETA 2354. At the moment, we're due to arrive on time, but it's slipping. It should be okay, hopefully. Oh, you can see the train signalling above us now. The track signals. A different style. So I'm just going to put on the brake a little bit. I need to get down to 90. I should do it. It's getting industrial again. There you go. Lindau track 2. End point. I presume the 200 mark is going to be right at the end of the platform. Have we noticed all the lighting changes inside the cabin as well? That's a nice touch. Completely different style of signalling. Bet we get our AWS warning in a second. What a surprise. <laughs> okay, let's drop it down to 50. Perfect. Spot on. I wonder how many times you'd have to practice this before you could get it bang on in career mode. You know, no speeding penalties in particular. Speeding penalties are the worst ones, they are the hardest. It's so easy to pick up speeding points. Oh, there's a motorbike. You see that? There's a little moped there. <laughs> little scooter. Oh, this this is nice. Look at this. Lake on that side. Lake on that side. Little marina. Beautiful. Oh, look, I'm speeding. Even though I don't even think I was. <laughs> Down to 30. Cool. Cool beans. This is working nicely. I like this. I like the scenery. This three countries pack is very nice. Oh, I remember here in episode one. Look at this. I remember leaving here. Like, all these people are still here. <laughs> but it was daytime when we set when we uh, set off. Okay, I've got to find that two hundred marker. I think I dropped my speed down. Is it down here? Do I just go to the end, maybe? I'm going to assume I go to the end. I can't see a 200 marker, so... Why would you not go to the end? This looks like a good stop, doesn't it? Beautiful, look at that, I'm almost bang on line up there. Awesome. Right, everybody off. This train terminates here. All change, please. Passengers, please take your belongings with you. And your rubbish. No, I don't mean your rubbish, I mean take your rubbish with you. Your rubbish? Cool, we've done it. Scenario number three is complete. Cool. I like this. Three countries corner route. Like I say, I think it's going to get more difficult soon. Well done. This is the end of your shift. Now go home and get some sleep. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, oh. <laughs> what do we do? 
sped 11 times in proper in proper horn use 7 times oh come on I'm just having fun you don't penalise me for that god this game's so picky 42 miles 68 kilometres 48 minutes that is scenario 3 done now look scenario 4 they were the first 3 on green scenario 4 3 yellow dots it's going to get harder now Going to get, it's going to ramp up the difficulty level. Look, the next three are three yellow dots. So the next scenario, scenario I'll do, which will be episode four, it is the year 2004, and the Lake Constance Shipping Company celebrates its 120-year anniversary. Thousands of spectators are flocking to the lake. The railways are running special trains between the ports. Take control of one of those trains and take it from Lindau to Rorschachhaven. Ro Ro That's how you say it. Use stopping markers one in Switzerland and 150 in Austria. Now the fact that that's three yellow implies there's going to be some signalling issues going on there. But that's it for um, part three. Give me a thumbs up if you like this series. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends if you like Train Simulator. Tell them about my channel. And video description has a link to the three country corner route. Don't forget that. Take care guys. Happy training. <laughs>